Hi, welcome back. This is the eighth lecture on topology, possibly the third lecture on continuous mass between topological spaces. And, and at, I hope that I will be able to finish whatever I want to say about continuous maps between topology spaces by okay today. The reason is that uh, there are a lot of small things in the general topology they try to avoid. Uh, okay just the only set theoretic thing they do. But there are very interesting things, especially with the real world functions one has to understand. And if you want to do use topology elsewhere, it's very a must. That's why I'm spending time on that. I hope you all appreciate. Okay, let's go. Let's get started. Yeah. Right. So in the last lecture, what we did was I had a metric space XD then I define a function of fix a in x. So this is like this. I have a fixed and this may be arbitrary x. And then, okay, let us look at the distance between. This is distance between x and u. Okay. So what, how I define f of x equal to distance between x and u. We showed that f from x to r is continuous and it's a non-constant because f of a is 0 and f of x equal to distance between a and x and a is not equal to 0 if x is different from a. Therefore, this is a non-constant. So, every metric space has a lot of continuous functions, right? For each a, I can generate such functions. So, if you call it f a, then the collection of a as a varies over x is a large collection. of non-constant continuous function. Of course, assuming that, uh, you know, x has at least two, two elements, right? Okay. Otherwise, you know, some of you will just write a common, okay? Of course, I am aware of such things, but you know, some people, right? But we want to generalize this. And as usual, this generalization involves real analysis, <laughs> okay? My favorite. So, let us fix a non-empty subset A of x right then I want to define the distance so suppose I have okay this is my a and this is my x I want to define the distance between x and a so how what is the intuition suppose think of this as a city if you want to think of this this is your a and this is your x you want to reach a quickly then what do you think you look at all possible po points of entry into a right and look at the nearest to point so that you can get in. Therefore, the distance between you and the city A is the minimum of all possible distances, right? Do you understand this intuitively? Okay, therefore, we define dA at x or sometimes I also denote by dxA. This is by definition the GLB of distance between x and A as A varies over capital A. You understand that? These are the various points A and I am looking at all the distances. Okay, since this example is going to deal with the GLB, okay, LUB also I could have reviewed, but I didn't. So let me just look at everything. Suppose E is a non empty subset of R. Okay, then your real number alpha is the GLB. It is unique, G of E, if two things happen alpha is a lower bound of E. That means if you give me x in E, what is the relation between x and alpha? Alpha should be less than or equal to x because alpha is a lower bound. Next, it's the greatest lower bound. Greatest lower bound means among all lower bounds, it's the greatest. That is, if you say beta E is a lower bound of E, then what should be the relation between alpha and beta? Alpha is the greatest among lower bound. Therefore, beta must be less than or equal to alpha. So, as a corollary, you have two dash. If gamma is a real number, if gamma is greater than alpha, that is a GLB of E, then what do I know about gamma? So, again look at a picture. This is alpha and if you give me beta, a lower bound, then beta must be less than or equal to gamma. Suppose if you have a gamma greater than alpha, then gamma cannot be a lower bound. That means there exists an X in E so that that X will be strictly less than this is any 
it is strictly less than gamma do you understand that please pay attention if you this is the first time you are learning this properly okay i would request you to just pause review and proceed this box item alone okay please do that this is going to be very crucial for what we are going to do so please learn this one okay so how did i define d a of x let me call it f of x for the time being so that is equal to the glb of distance between x and a okay and a is in a now notice that this is a subset of real numbers you understand that this is a subset of real numbers and it's non empty because a is non empty therefore distance between x and a is at least one real number exists therefore this is this set is not empty and not and also every element of this set dx a is greater than or equal to 0 therefore the set is bounded below by 0 right therefore the glb exist okay therefore glb of dx a exists okay that is what we call fx i want to show fx is continuous okay and it's a little trickier especially if you have not seen glb argument earlier okay i'm going to do that what i'm going to actually show is i'm going to estimate fx minus fy okay this is my x and this is my a and you are going to give me two points x here another point y here then i want to look at the distance between x and y okay this may be the shortest distance this may be the shortest distance i want to compare fx minus f y in modulus actually but in at present yeah now let's look at fx what is fx fx is distance between x and y right right okay now you start with any a in capital a then what is the relation between this dx capital a the set and dx the element a remember G, this one fx is the glb the low, lower bound for all dx a. therefore this must be less than equal to you understand that sure now if you had understood my analysis courses if you had followed you know that uh, the tool is always the curry leaf trick that is try to use triangle inequality with this soup. so this one remember i want to compare the distance between x and a and y and a right therefore i want y to come in therefore what do i do i look at dxy plus dy a do you understand this this is for any a okay so for any a in capital a i have this what do I have? I have distance between x and a is less than or equal to distance between x and y and plus distance between y and a. Do you agree with that? This is true for any a, for every a in a. In particular, distance between x and capital A minus distance between x and y is less than or equal to distance between y and a for any a. You understand that? Now let us look at this number dxa minus dxy and the set of real numbers dya as a varies over capital A. So what I was found out this this okay this one shows what does this one say? This says this real number is a lower bound for this set. Do you understand that? Okay. Please learn these things concepts. Okay. In case you are not at very thorough, please visit my video on lower bounds, upper bounds, L U B and G L B. Okay. This is your lower bound for this set. Okay. Therefore, this lower bound d x a minus d x y must be less than equal to the lower bound. DYA. This is the greatest lower bound, right? 
the greater the lower bound for this set is DOA and this is the lower bound therefore this should happen do you understand therefore what happens DXA minus DOA is less than equal to distance between X and Y right this is your FX minus FY is less than between distance between X and Y now interchange X and Y I will have FY minus FX is less than equal to distance between y and x because our symmetry is the same as x and y that means modulus fx minus fy is less than equal to distance between x and y do you understand this pause review proceed okay so in particular if i want to say F is continuous at any point A. Uh, let me not call it any A Z in okay. Z in X. What do I have to do? I have to show Fx minus Fz. Right? I have Fz. Okay. I have Fz minus epsilon. Fz plus epsilon. Right? So I have to find an open set. Okay. So this I want to say is less than epsilon. But this fellow, this again analysis, Fz is less than strictly le or less than or equal to distance between x and z. Do you understand that? That's what you showed. For any x and y, mod fx minus f y is less than or equal to distance between x and y. Therefore, if I want to show this is less than epsilon, I know this fellow is already less than or equal to this. Therefore, if I make sure this is less than epsilon, I am through. Okay, so what does this mean? This means choose x such that in B Z epsilon. So for all x in that fx minus fz is less than epsilon. Do you understand that? Therefore, therefore f is continuous at z, and and that if f is, is continuous on x. Okay, pause, review, proceed. This actually shows its uniform continuity, etc. Since uh, in uh, general topology course, I have not introduced, I am uh, refraining from saying such things. But if you want little more details, please look at my book on metric spaces. But this is good enough, I have proved. Now you see that how many functions I have produced now? I have produced lot of continuous functions d, x, a wherever a is a non-empty subset of x in particular a equal to singleton a okay so this is a very very large class of non-constant continuous functions okay please learn this well we will make use of this concept that is distant this I will call distance of x to the set A or distance of A, distance of x from the set A, okay, or distance between the point x and the set A, distance between x and the set A, okay, I, I call dxA as this. Learn this concept well. I will be using this at least on two or three different occasions in the course. Please learn this one. Okay. So now we have done something about continuous functions on metric spaces, right? So now another important class of uh, exams exists. What are they? They are our RNs. And RN, what are the things? If you watch my metric spaces then I hope d infinity or d max ok three metrics what did we show let tau 1 be the topology induced by d1 tau 2 be the topology induced by the Euclidean metric and tau max be the metric induced by d max what we show are shown is these three topologies are the same that is ok Whenever I deal with the to topological notions on Rn, it does not matter whether I use a d1 or d2 or d infinity, because 
they all induce the same topology even though the metrics are different please understand this in the topology what do i have to worry about i have to worry about only open sets and what i proved in that metric space course in the first four lectures is that d1 d2 d infinity all three induce okay a set u is open in d1 if only if is open in d2 and if only if is open in d infinity this all we have proved yeah therefore the topologies are the same please keep that in mind we are going to make use of this important notion okay so my question now is the following suppose x is a topological space and f is a function from x tau to rn where the rn is the topology induced by one of the matrix d1 d2 or d infinity usually i will assume it is d infinity or sorry d max because that's easier to estimate okay since okay the topology on rn induced by d max matrix and which is the standard topology there is no problem okay this is you must have seen in your calculus of several variables or functions of several variable course if i take here f of x this is a vector in rn therefore i can write f of x as something like say y1 and y n this is a vector in rn but this y1 is going to be a function of x therefore you call it as f1 of x and f1 of x you, you understand that okay so these fi's are called component functions note is that if you look at r and to r take the x equal to x1 to x n okay map it to the th coordinate then you are f i is nothing other than pi call this as pi a projection on the th factor pi a composition all these things you must have learn many times i just quickly recall so what is that i want to prove i am sure all of you have guessed it what is your guess because you had already seen it somewhere yeah yeah from the x tau to rn is continuous you only you each f i is continuous okay this is the theorem we want to prove and again so let me just stick to n equal to 2 for simplicity because i can draw picture you can compute and after that it's the same thing but for notation okay so let me just take r2 yeah are you happy right the important thing is in r2 with respect to d max what are the simplest open set suppose i have some point okay i have a point here what are the simplest open sets let me call it a comma b this means this is a and this is b yeah what are the simplest open sets do you remember what are the open balls in d max matrix they are the squares okay the sides are parallel to the axis x and y axis in this case r2 case right therefore this means there is something like a minus delta to a plus delta and here b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon therefore this is the thing do you follow that if you want the same epsilon you can keep it so if you want to say suppose b of a comma b with this epsilon yeah i'm sorry i should use epsilon because i'm talking about open balls in d max metric therefore okay this will be a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon therefore the open ball this is we have seen So now you see why I wanted you to go through all those four. If I had gone through, then I don't recall. I can go faster. <laughs> But I am sure, in spite of my request, many of you very cursorily went through it all. Okay, these are the basic open sets, right? Therefore, if I want to show, let me ask you, please continue. I okay, fix I. Okay. Anyway, if please now you have to move to right. I am going. I am thinking of R two now, right? so i will show f1 is continuous similarly i can prove f2 is continuous yeah now let's look at what does that mean 
so I have here so fix a point okay since I'm using a b here fix a point p next right and f of p I will I'm going to write as f1 of p and f2 of p this is an r2 right what do I want so let us call this as this point as a comma b in r2 okay keep the picture in mind okay right this is a picture what do I want so now you are given me an open set B which is this open ball B of AB with some epsilon right this is a typical open ball position what I want what I want to do I want to show your phone is continuous for that what do I have to do I have X here I have the point P here I have to find and open set U containing the point P so that what happens for each X here my FX lies here okay in this open set V this is my V do you understand this okay now uh, now since f is continuous I know there exists an open set V which has this are you following right now what do I want to show I want to show if f1 is continuous at p now what is f1 at p that is a you follow that therefore now what do I have to do you are going to give me f1 at a f1 at p which is a right to check f1 is continuous at p what I have to do I have to find a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon this is a typical open set around a that is f1p then I have to find a u you understand that now what I am going to do you had given me a what I am going to do is I am looking at the open ball VBA epsilon yeah and for this open ball since f is continuous at p there is an open set u so that for every point let me call z because this I am using x y here for every point z here okay f of z lies here you follow that sure okay so what does that mean that mean for each z in u f of z lies in v which is a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon right the, what is this this is f1 of z into f2 of z this lies here what does that mean this implies f1 of z lies in the interval a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon for which is z for every z in u have I proved it yes because I want to prove f1 is continuous at p f1 of a, 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 p is a therefore I take a typical open set around a ok because given any open set b I can always find an interval, an interval of the form a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon which is contained in b right therefore I will take this then what do I do I want to make I want to find a u an open set containing p so that f maps u into this interval now how did I achieve that since f is continuous I use this epsilon to find an epsilon ball around this point f of z this is a comma b right now for this since f is continuous there is a u open containing p so that for every z fz lies here and cancel etc right so I have shown f1 is continuous therefore we conclude f1 is continuous similarly f2 is continuous ok ok you just to make sure that you understood this part of the proof you should attempt on your own ok go through the proof f1 continuity of f1 and now try to draw picture and try to check f2 that way you don't have to remember 
you will know how to do it on your own later now i want to prove the converse what is the converse assume that f1 f2 are continuous i want to know whether f1 is f f f equal to f1 f2 is continuous right so let us fix a point p again okay this is my x and fix a point p right okay and i know f1 f2 are continuous right let me ask you f1 of p is again a f2 of p is b right what do i want to show i want to show this is my a comma b okay and take any open set containing the in r2 but i know i can always put this as a square right so there exists a typical open set namely a, a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon and b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon okay this is this open bar with respect to d max metric okay right now since f1 is continuous i know there is a u1 what happens for every x in u1 for every z in u1 f of z is going to be in this the in, in this interval a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon you understand that f1 is continuous at to p therefore for, for a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon which is okay which contains f of f1 of p which is a right so there exists u1 an open set in x so that p belong to u1 and f of f1 of u is contained in this may u1 is contained in this now i can do similar thing f2 is continuous at p therefore there exists b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon which contains f2 of p which is d and there exists an open set u so that p belong to u2 and of f2 of u2 is contained in this right so this is my so this is my u2 so what do you think i should take as u all of you know right let u equal to u1 intersection u2 then what happens start with any z here then f of z is what f1 of z f2 of z now what do i know about f1 of z f1 of z belong to u1 right because z belong to u and u is a subset of u1 therefore f of z belong to f of u1 sorry and that is contained in a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon and similarly for z belong to u f of z f2 of z is contained belongs to f2 of u2 this is f1 but that is contained in b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon always think of the picture don't okay you understand therefore f of z belong to a minus epsilon a plus epsilon times b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon right therefore i have found an open set containing u so that you have mapped it to open set u this is your u <coughs> okay and f of u is contained in the square f minus epsilon this square you understand that therefore i proved f is continuous and here let's try it okay pause review proceed So let us look at some easy consequences. Right? 
let us look at the identity map from Rn to Rn, right? And call this as f. Then what is f1 of x? Fi of x. It is nothing other than xi, ith coordinate. You understand that? Yes. Therefore, what do I know? And we know the identity map between from the same space to the same topological space is continuous. That this is known, right? We had already seen this is continuous, right? Therefore, the component must also be continuous. What what is a component? It's a projection map. That is the projection map pi i from R to R is continuous. Do you understand this? Sure. Okay. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now let me go to something else. This abstract result. Suppose I have topological space x tau x and y tau y and z tau z. Okay. And let us see your PNGR functions. And I have point P here, and this is for P equal to Q, right? Let me assume P is continuous at P, and G is continuous at Q. Now I have composite function, G composite from where to where? X tau x to Z tau x tau Z. Yeah. So I want to know G composite is continuous at Okay, this is very easy. Just let me draw a picture. I am not going to write the proof. Okay, now by now all of you should know. Yes, why is it? And this is my F, and this is my G. And what do I have? I have a P here. I have a Q here. Right. What do I want to know? G whether G composite. Of. What is G composite? Of? This is going to be the point G composite. Of. This is G of Q, which is same as G composite F at P, right? So I want to know whether G composite F is continuous at P. So what does that mean? You are going to give me an open set containing G of Q. This is called it open set W. This W is tau of Z. I what do I have to find? <coughs> I have to find an open set here. U such so that G comes here, maps this U inside this W. Correct. But that's very easy. What do I do? Let's look at it. G comes here, but P is nothing other G at Q. And what do I know about G? G is continuous at Q. Therefore, what do I know? I know there exists an open set to B such so that okay, this is will be G of V. G of V is contained in W, right? Because of continuity at Q, continuity of G at Q. You follow that? Now let's look at. Now you have if this continuous at P, you would give me an open set containing Q. Therefore, by continuity of F at G, I know there exists. And open set U said so that this is your pop U. Do you follow that? Therefore, if I start with any X in U, the FX will map map it inside B and G will map that your pop X inside W. So I have proved G composite F is continuous. Pause, review, proceed. Okay. Now I am going to use this to prove something interesting. Okay. Let's look at R two. Okay. I want to look at two functions from R two to R. One I will call it alpha, which which goes to addition. Alpha stands for A. A stands for addition. X plus Y. And beta. Okay. So not beta. M. M for mu. Mu for m, m for multiplication. Therefore, mu maps x y to x times y. You understand? I am going to show alpha and mu are continuous. 
you follow this the addition map from r2 to r and multiplication map from r2 to r they are continuous functions continuous related function what is the topology in r2 it's a topology induced by any one of the three metrics and r is the usual topology don't forget such things okay to prove that what should i do remember these are all metric spaces therefore to prove continuity at any point let's fix a point p equal to a b okay i want to prove mu is alpha is easy so i will leave it to you mu is continuous this is what i want to prove right so what do i have to do so mu of a b what is mu of a b it is a times b so i have a times b is a real number then what i have to look at i will i have to look at some interval a b minus epsilon and a b plus epsilon right then what do i have to find i have to find an r2 this is my p maybe this is my p then i have to find a u so that whenever x and y are here then mu of x y should lie in this interval is that clear yeah the way to do that is as usual if you have again seen my real analysis and matrix space continuity etc you know that i would estimate this mu of x y minus mu of a b this is what i would estimate but mu of x y don't worry this are all easy x y minus a b right now what do i do if you remember your convergence thing x and converges to a and y and converges to b then x and y and converges to ab i'm going to make the same argument okay so this one i'll write it as x y minus x a plus x a minus ab right but this is x into y sorry Yes, uh, y right to x. I'm sorry, x y. Therefore, uh, then I should write it. Okay, let me write it. A uh, y and a y minus a b. I'm sorry for the goof. So x is common. Sorry, y is common. Therefore, this is going to be x minus a times y and this is a into y minus b. But that is less than I put to mod x minus a into mod y plus mod a into mod y minus b you understand i want this to be less than epsilon right therefore what do i have to do i have to find a delta positive so that the d max di distance between x and y and a and b whenever it is less than delta i want to say mu x y minus mu a b must be less than epsilon yeah but what is this this is maximum of mod x minus a and mod y minus b that means whenever mod x minus a is less than delta and mod y minus b is less than delta i want this to be less than epsilon okay your analysis should be good that's why in topology courses this kind of things are usually avoided okay because the teachers don't want to expose the students weakness about analysis <laughs> okay right so now it's very easy yeah what do i want i want this to be less than epsilon therefore i make sure this is less than epsilon by 2 this is also less than epsilon by 2 right and where does y vary why should vary on some interval on a b this is my ab right this is p which is ab therefore i can assume okay the u at u is contained in b of p1 that is for any point x y mod x minus a is less than 1 as well as mod y minus b is less than 1 right i can always find a smaller open set therefore what is the therefore what do i know mod y equal to mod y minus b plus b less than equal to right mod y minus b plus b by triangle inequality mod y minus b plus b that's less than equal to 1 plus mod b you follow that and a is also less than mod a maybe 0 so let me make it 
less than one plus mod a. Therefore, this inequality is less than or equal to mod x minus a into one plus mod b plus one plus mod a into mod y minus b. Okay. Are you following? I do not know what is delta. Okay. Assume such a delta exists. Therefore, this will be less than delta into one plus mod b plus delta into one plus mod a. Let me assume m equal to maximum of one plus mod a, one plus mod b. Then this will be less than equal to m delta plus m delta. This I want to be less than f sin. That means my delta should be less than f sin by two m. Do you understand this? Maybe I went fast. If you had seen my real analysis algebra continuous functions etc., how I fix epsilon delta, you will be very comfortable. Again, if you have gone through my sequence lectures on real analysis, this kind of estimate will be very very easy. Okay, and many of you are in secondary MSc, so you okay, <laughs> you may not as watch my real analysis course because you had already learned pass the course, right? All of you will suffer now. Huh? I'm just joking. The reason is so that you will realize you have to learn those things thoroughly. Okay, there is no shortcut. Okay, just getting a good grade alone is not going to work. Okay, so similarly addition. Okay, so what I have shown the multiplication and addition are from R to T R or continuous. The reason why I am going little fast is to prove the so-called algebra of continuous function. Now suppose f and g are real-valued continuous functions. Okay, then I can define f plus g. That's a function from x to r. How do I define f plus g at x equal to f x plus g x? Okay. Now uh, my question is: Is f plus g continuous? Right? But that's very easy. Why? You see the magic now. Now le let me report from x to r to okay. Any x goes to f x comma g x. Right? Yeah. F x is a real number. G x is a real number. You understand? That's what I will. Uh, now from r to Now I can choose alpha, or I also can also choose mu. Go under alpha. Where does it go to? F of x plus g of x. Okay. Under mu, where does it go to? F x into g x. Right. Now what do I know? Now let us call this as a function. Okay. Function phi. This function phi is continuous. Why? What is phi of x? The components are f one of x. And f of x into g of x, and pi is continuous. We had already seen if and only if the component function f and g are continuous. That is given to me. F and g are continuous. Therefore, pi is continuous, and we had already seen alpha and mu are continuous. Therefore, what is alpha composite pi of x? This is nothing other than f x plus g x. That is f plus g x. And what is the mu composite pi of x? That is f x into g x. That is f g times x, right? And we had seen pi is continuous, alpha is continuous, mu is continuous. Therefore, the composite function these are all continuous. Therefore, this follows the addition of continuous function is continuous, multiplication of continuous function is continuous. Similarly, scalar multiplication. Okay, that is from R to R two to R two. Right. Look at alpha x y going to alpha x alpha y. This is continuous function. The proof is much simpler than what I have shown. I have shown the product map is continuous. Addition map is continuous. I left to you. Similarly, scalar multiplication is also continuous. These are all very easy now. You should, since you are uh, li likely to be uh, an MSc student, you should learn how to prove these things on your own. You can mimic the earlier proof, okay. And the next one, look at 
R star to R star, R star is, is non-zero reals. The map x going to 1 upon x is continuous. This we know from real analysis. Right? Therefore, what do I know? Suppose I have a function f from x tau to r, assume it's continuous and assume fx is not 0 for any x. Okay, f 0 is not a value at all. Then I can define a function g from x tau x to r and g of x equal to 1 by fx. I want to know whether g is continuous. How many of you can see? So I have x to r, what is the thing? f going to fx and from here r, this is actually r star now and r star here t going to or if you call it oy, oy going to 1 by y. This is the inversion map. Okay. Let me call it uh, psi. Psi of y is 1 by y. Okay there. This is a continuous map. Therefore, my map G is nothing other than psi composite D of. Okay? Because G of x equal to psi of f of x, but psi of anything is 1 by f of x. So I know this is continuous and f is given to be continuous, therefore composite of continuous function is continuous. Have you understood? Yeah? So what you are shown is, if I look at the topological space x tau, let us look at c of x r, this is set of all continuous functions from x to r. And this is non-empty because constant functions are there. Right? Remember, uh, for arbitrary topological space, there may not exist non-constant function. Therefore, it may turn out to be this is nothing other than constant functions. Right? Anyway. So what you have shown is this is a vector space. It's also an algebra over R. Also it's an algebra. So what do you mean by algebra? A vector space is also a ring essentially. Okay. Right. There is last one with that I will stop. Now remember from R to R I have a very natural map. Remember this is all usual topology. Let's go into mod X. Okay. So I will call this just mod. Okay, this is a continuous function. This we know. Right? Therefore, if I have f from x tau x to r continuous, then I have mod f of f to be equal to modulus of f. This is the definition. You understand that? Modulus f is a function now. What is modulus f? That's a function from x to r. How is it defined? Its value at x is this. I want to know whether mod f is continuous. Is the proof clear? Why? Mod f is nothing other than composite of this. F from. So, I have x to r and r to r. This is a function here. This is a modulus function. These are all continuous. Composite is continuous. Therefore, this is continuous. Right? So, in view of that, you also maximum of f and g and minimum of f and g okay f and g are continuous functions then these are also continuous okay i i will not give a proof remember maximum of unit to real numbers a and b is okay mod a minus b plus a sorry a minus b plus mod a minus b by 2. Okay, use this and similarly minimum also. Using this, you can check how this formula is arrived at. Again, if you look at my real analysis book or lectures, videos, you will see I derive this geometrically. Okay. Right, so this is A, A is here, B is here, but I do not know whether A is less than B or what, but I, what I know is this is A minus, sorry, A plus, oh, I'm sorry, A plus B by 2, good, this is A plus B by 2, see, it's good that I tried to derive it here, A plus B by 2 is the middle point, so if I want to get 
to the right of this see this is half the distance this is half the distance between these two points therefore to get the maximum what I have to do I have to move from this point to the right by half the distance half the distance is mod the full distance is mod a minus b half the distance is mod a minus b therefore I have moved it for minimum from this you move backwards that is a plus b minus modulus a minus b by 2 ok anyway go through these things I hope finally I have proved whatever I wanted to say about continuous functions all the basic results because real value continuous functions etc most often they don't do that composite etc is very easy they do that but you know finally when you want to use topology most often you have to deal with uh, real valued functions or complex valued functions etc so you have to learn them so that's why it took a lot of pain so I expected to finish within two lectures but it took three lectures but I think it's worth it I hope you also appreciate it do you please okay write your comments so we will meet again till then take care and stay safe